It was a warm summer morning in 1963, and I was four years old. My mother had dressed me in a white wife beater t-shirt and a tiny pair of Levi's. No shoes, tussled sun bleached hair, and one freckle on my right cheek. I still have that today. I stood there, buck toothed by the stove, and gazed up toward the handle of the iron skillet my mother was looking down at. My pancake got flipped. My mother looked down, smiled at me, then looked across the stove to the sound of the sizzling bacon. It was breakfast time in the Formica kitchen. Huh. Those were the days. As I look back, we were the brochure for the amazing future of American kitchen ingenuity. Huh. The low summer rising sun casts long shadows of plum trees. That anxious German shepherds on the green grass of our backyard on this already hot day in San Bernardino. July. My childhood slipped away in a series of unmemorable days. Some things happened. That's another story. But all that unmemorableness, huh? That changed, <laughs> oh, did it, when I got a little older. Oh, now we're making memories. So, <laughs> all right, so you got to remember, I was four. Now, only a dozen years later, now I'm I'm still, you know, a kid, kind of. I'm 16, right? And all of a sudden, I'm wearing brown bell-bottom corduroy pants, a pair of red suede five-inch platform shoes, and an unbuttoned button-up purple silk shirt, and I got a rolled-up sock in my underwear, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, it was 1975. The year that unrocked the world. Huh. What a fucking mess that was. It was disco time. Disco. Oh, yeah. Put all the rock music aside. Let's do some disco. Oh, what a fucking catastrophe that was. Yeah, baby. Disco. Oh, so much for Pink Floyd and Jimi Hendrix and uh, all those other ones, you know. Uh, now we got the Bee Gees and Abba and the Village People. Oh, ho, ho. oh, man, what a time. It was a time of teenagers with fake IDs, dark spaces with in bars, in dark bars with dark spaces, got disco balls spinning around at high rates of rotation. Whoop, 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 whoop. We got horny hordes of uh, disoriented drunk dudes determined to get some. Uh, <laughs> and the women weren't any different. <laughs> and they all wanted it. I was all of 16. First time I discoed the night away. Oh, and coming out of that bar, I came out with a 26-year-old woman. <laughs> uh, get this, man. <laughs> She forgot her own name. <laughs> I mean, she's just put me in the passenger seat. She says, I'm taking you home, boy. And I said, well, well what's your name? <laughs> she couldn't come up with it. <laughs> you know, I really didn't care at that point. Uh, I'm not a pedant. Uh, I didn't hold it against her. <laughs> but I did hold something else against her for a while. Later. <laughs> oh, but she seemed nice until the next morning. <laughs> you know, you, you think things are going right, and all of a sudden, you know, it's like 180, 
Okay, we're going that way. Now we're going the other way. And uh, we went the other way. She stood up on the waterbed. She had a waterbed, and we had poured a gallon of Crisco oil on it and sloshed around and slid back and forth. And, oh, man, I was shiny the next morning. She was shiny, too. But <laughs> she managed to stand up on the edge of it and barfed. And then she took a shit on me. I'm thinking, uh, I'm not, uh, if this is what dating is, I'm, I think I'm going to go back. I'm going to do something else. You know, I, I, uh, all right, I'm horny, but uh -uh, this, this isn't working out. So <laughs> disco suddenly lost its appeal for me. <laughs> you can understand. So what I did, I started playing golf. <laughs> I didn't get laid as much, but not once. Nobody shit on me while I was playing golf. I mean, it seemed like a safe sport, and it turned out to be pretty good. <laughs> I got a I got a seven handicap now, and uh, well, there's more to that story. I'll tell you in a little bit. So in those days, after my shitty descent into disco madness. Uh, mornings in the San Bernardino Valley, that's where I live, San Bernardino Valley, big old, you know, uh, mornings in the San Bernardino Valley were hazy, dark, and sometimes outright oppressive. I mean, if you think of the color gray, and then you add a little black, and, uh, stir it up, and then throw it up in the sky, that's what it was like living in the San Bernardino Valley back then, okay? It was oppressive. Uh, the sun was surely up, but no one could fucking see it. <laughs> you see, we lived in God's bowl of hazy hell, a place so surrounded by the good, rising to the sky, tectonic works of himself, uh, we captured and kept all the bad shit carried along by the onshore winds from that mess of roads and cars and tattoo parlors called L.A. We were like a big old catcher's mitt for a game of, uh, throw the shit that way. We caught it. A big bowl of hazy L.A. shit. I lived a hundred yards from a mountain, and I'm not kidding. It was it was probably less than a hundred yards. Okay, I lived a hundred mountains mm, from this mountain. It was actually called Little Mountain. It's in the San Bernardino Valley. It's next to the San Bernardino Mountains, and it's called Little Mountain because you know compared to big mountains, it's little. So, uh, uh, and I spent a lot of time on Little Mountain. But anyway, I lived a hundred yards from Little Mountain, and I couldn't see that fucker for three or four months of the year. Hazy bowl of L.A. shit. Smog. They called it smog. Those fuckers are down there driving around, parked on the freeway and traffic jams, wasting their lives away in the commute to that horse show of a job that pays just enough to buy the car they're sitting in and wasting their lives. <laughs> a car that they can get on credit for the next 512 months. Oh, we can put you in the car you want. Oh, and also, also, they can show up at the disco bar while the other debt slaves pretend to be successful by buying drinks for all the Women who dropped out of high school and dropped into a thong, thong underwear. I don't like them. I, I, I want a little mystery, okay? I don't want some fucking string rubbing up against an anus. Uh -uh, that does not do it for me. I mean, that's the picture I got. String rubbing up against an anus. Uh-uh, that's not working. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> these guys in their 512-month payment cars. <laughs> They can go to these these places if they got these dumb women thinking they're gonna hook up with a man of means in a 
disco bar. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this is a world where dumb meets dumber, and the fuckers go home and fuck all night, and voila, nine months later, dumbest. <laughs> dumbest come shooting out of a vagina. Oh, and suddenly... All those BMW, <laughs> all those BMW, <laughs> all those BMW, uh, owning 512 payment motherfuckers who were primping and praying that one of those dumb dropout drop-in cunts was watching while they drove drove into the parking lot with their 512-month payment car, <laughs> are looking at a new payment plan. Oh, yeah. Well, uh... What is 18 years times 12 months of child support? Oh, fuck. <laughs> There's some big math going on there. Oh, man. And think about it. A squirt here. And a squirt there. And suddenly, you got a financial clusterfuck of gargantuan proportions staring you down. <laughs> Your fucking life is over. Oh, 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 oh. suddenly... That 512-month car payment seems like a minor inconvenience, <laughs> but surely a fucked-up investment. These guys got to be thinking, uh, if I hadn't bought the car, <laughs> if I'd ridden my bike to the bar that night, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure there's some thinking going on there. So it makes me wonder, though, <laughs> uh, why, why BMWs? Why is it that Disco and BMW hooked up the way it did back then? It make me wonder. Uh, so, what does BMW stand for? Blow me, woman. <laughs> yeah, that might be one. Uh, big, massive woodchucks. <laughs> It's probably <laughs> It's probably not that. <laughs> okay. Uh, what else? What else can it stand for? <laughs> Bark mama. Woof. <laughs> okay, one more. One more. <laughs> Bad mother wants some. Oh, okay. <laughs> little, little artistic license going on there. Yeah, that's plural, okay? B-M-W-S, plural. But it works. And for, you know what? You know what? For 512 fucking payments, you get to make up your own acronym, motherfuckers. <laughs> it was July... 24th, 1977. I had just graduated from high school a month before, and I got a call from a close friend who said my golf coach tried to suck his dick. <laughs> Shit. My golf coach is gay? <laughs> he, I, I remember times when he was just, it was weird the way he would hold two golf balls and and it just didn't look right the way he was touching them. So, I mean, my instincts were not as sharp as they should have been. I should have realized something was going on there, the way he was holding them golf balls. Uh, but, okay, so my golf coach is gay. And uh, so so now, uh, okay, disco is out. <laughs> not, no more of that. And uh, golf is out. I don't want to run into any more gay people. Okay, so I'm, I'm straight. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I like my balls where they're at. And uh, if I want to put them in someone's hands, I'm going to get to choose that. And it's not going to be a golf coach who's a guy. Okay? All right, so what now? What am I going to do with my life now in my spare time? Well, <laughs> Funny thing, <laughs> I got a big old story to tell you. That is a story that I look forward to telling. 
uh, in part two of this blog. Ha <laughs> ha.